So cool. So again, all the creators up here are, they're here for a reason and because the conversation's all around community and like intentionally building community. I wanna start off with this, get the crowd involved. When I say the word community, what are words or phrases that come to mind? Shout it out. Friends. Friends. Support. Support. I guess we don't care. I guess we don't care about community. All right, that's the end of the panel. Screw this, let's just meet. I want to say, so let me ask you, all you guys this. When you think of, Dre, when you think of community, what comes to mind for you? Uh, all those words, basically. <laughs> uh, support is a big one, especially for my niche. Uh, people are learning a new skill or hobby, so having support from not just me as a creator, but other people in the community, because there's a spectrum of people with different experiences. There's some who are just starting for the first time, but there's also people who have done it way, way longer than I have, so they have the wisdom to share. So I think that, and also I think I heard belonging. Belonging? Yeah, belonging is also very key, um, because starting a new craft is also daunting, and just knowing that there's a community, there's people in the same boat that are doing it now or have done it before, that sense of belongingness adds like confidence and commitment. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're so right. I think you can you can really tell the difference, and you'll get to see when you get to speak to them later. Like you can really tell the difference in the way they approach their content and how they approach being a creator. But Lori, tell me this: your story. We were talking about it before. Great, great story. Give me like a thirty second synopsis of like how did you get on TikTok? What was the impetus? Yeah. So basically, during the pandemic, I just kind of become became obsessed with cleaning, sanitization. And when we were on that very serious lockdown where we couldn't go anywhere except maybe the grocery store, I started creating TikTok videos of, I don't know, cleaning my house. And it entertained me. And um, here I am now doing this full time. And it's awesome. It is. All thanks to TikTok. When, okay, but when you're interacting with people in your comments, because I'm sure when I, when I looked at your comments earlier today, it's like, oh, thank you, I didn't know this, or oh, where can I get this, or oh, what do I do with this? How much time are you spending in the comments? Um, I mean, between the comments and the DMs, I feel like I have such great, especially DMs, I have such great interaction. Um, and I feel like whenever someone comes and you know, sends me a DM based on content or checking in on me. I always feel like they are part of my besties, my family. Um, so that is part of the whole content creation process for me, uh, no matter what. Because um, it definitely gives me a pulse on what people are thinking and uh, gives new ideas as well. Laura, when you said you trans earlier on, you said you transitioned from corporate, obviously being the person you are today, to the creator space. Was there the idea in your mind that like, oh, you wanted to do this for the people that might have been struggling at home? Or was it more just like it was for you to start and then it evolved into so much more? I think when I first started, I mean, I had no intention on growing a platform. I did it to entertain myself because I was so bored at home during the pandemic. And I think what kept me going was seeing the community that was being built. And especially, you know, those years where we were all feeling a little lonely and at home and our whole work environment kind of shifted to go into a comment section and see someone say, wow, I thought I was the only one experiencing this. Like, I don't feel so alone now. And other people chiming in to be like, me too. That to me was kind of what kept me going, the intentionality, I guess, behind it. And then now it's all about the community. It truly is like I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for all the work besties out there that support me through and through and whatever I'm doing out there. So that's been huge for me. Talk to me about a fun example of when either someone came to you that, that was part of your community or in the comment section and said something that really impacted you or, or how you impacted them. What was that interaction? What was that relationship like? Well, the first one that comes to mind is I actually, so I do travels actually with my community and I was in Costa Rica with a bunch of my followers, which I know sounds wild, but it's really cool, I promise you. And it was on the last day, so we were all really close at this point, and we were, we were opening up to each other, and, and one lady, she was like, can I tell you something? I was like, absolutely, whatever you wanna tell me. And she, she had opened up to say, you know, I found you and I was really struggling during the pandemic, and I was so alone, and I was sitting at home, working my nine to five, and you gave me that piece of community that made me know, like, you know what, even though I feel really alone right now, there are so many, other people out there sitting in their homes feeling alone, that that sense of community she had shared with me that helped her get through the pandemic. And that to me was when it clicked of, okay, a silly little video online 
actually makes a difference in people's lives. And that to me was like one of the most powerful moments I've had to date with, uh, with a follower. Dre or Lori, do you guys have a similar experience? Well, I'll definitely say that um, a lot of people don't like cleaning, never learned how to clean. I don't know, like raise your hands if you like cleaning. But people do find cleaning content oddly satisfying. And um, I get DMs all the time, especially if I post like a Saturday motivation clean. This is your gentle reminder to go scrub your bathtub. And the amount of people that will say to me, you know what, I watch you clean and now all of a sudden I have to go. When I kind of disappear, maybe I go on vacation, I get so many people who are like, when are you coming back because my house is a mess, <laughs> right? So they are kind of depending on me to basically inspire them and motivate them to clean. And I've heard so many kind of personal stories uh, where people have shared um, kind of the struggles they've had, whether it's like coming from a hoarding background um, and just kind of what that means to them and what that has done um, or had an impact on their life and kind of the outlet that they feel and how they've been able to kind of work through that through my content. And you'd think a silly little cleaning video has done that just like what you said. And um, I love that, I love hearing that. And it makes me feel so responsible for you know showing up for them as well. I was gonna say like, what does that do to you as a creator who has this community and you realize the impact that you're having on people beyond being like, oh, this is a lot of fun. It's your creative outlet during the pandemic. Does that change your approach to creating content? Does that change your approach to how you're building such community in the future? For sure. I, like, I feel responsible for sure. Like, I'm yeah. like, I have to show up because people are depending on me. Um, it's something so simple, but I can see based on, um, you know, comments and interactions that I've had with people, um, if they see me on the street, um, that they are like they look forward to the content and whatever it kind of provides to them, I do definitely feel a sense of responsibility to make sure that I'm consistent and that I am showing up for people, my besties. We're also talking about a lot about how you know our content has impacted the communities. The community, at least mine, has impacted me so much. Like even alone this week, I was having a few rough days and I'm going through a huge transition in my personal life. And I, I shared a little bit of that in my story and the amount of messages I got of take the space you need. We're still gonna be here for you when you get back. You're always telling us to set boundaries. You need to set some yourself here, like take that time. It meant the world to me to know that like, if I can't show up today for my community online, they've got my back. Like they've got me and whatever kind of happens. And so it's really nice to know that yes, I can provide for my community, but they also provide so much back to me. I think that's such an underrated piece. Like when we spoke, I think it was earlier this week, we were speaking about how a lot of some ideas and stuff come from the comment section and that like leads into your content. But the idea that if building the community is not only important for them, but it's so important for you guys as creators and dealing with that stuff, that's a very cool perspective that I don't think many people would, would think about. Dre, on, okay, kind of working off that same question, how do you think about building community as a creator? Like maybe, like I know it's a loaded question because there's many platforms and you have a brand and you create content, but what comes to mind when I say like building community in 2023? What does that look like? For me, like um, <clears throat> taking a step back, like community outside of the platform works best when there's a shared mission or goal. So for me, that's making sewing more accessible. And then secondly would be like psychological safety. So having a, creating like a, a space where people believe that they can speak up about ideas, questions, and comments without being punished or humiliated. And for me, that helps facilitate like a connection between people because they feel comfortable sharing their work or posting questions that then builds the community on these different social platforms. I think there is like it, it's it's interesting that you speak about like creating a space that people want to come back to, and I kind of I've heard that from both of you over the past I don't know how long it's been like five seven minutes or so that it's I create this they want to be in the comment section they connect with each other they give me something I give them something. Have you heard of, and we didn't prep this question, but I, I just wanna know, have we? Heard, have you guys had an experience, any one of you, where you've heard that like two people in the community or two people that are in your audience actually connected and like either solved each other's problems or became friends or started a clothing brand or went to each other's house, houses and cleaned each, <laughs> each well, other's counter? <laughs> nothing, nothing quite like that, but I definitely always, um, you know, part of, let's say, my caption, I always encourage people to share, this is what I do, you know, this is, I share the perspective of, this is how I kind of maintain my house, this is how I clean my house, but I always want to hear, what do you do? 
because there's a lot of people that are, let's say, quote unquote, cleaning experts themselves, and they have their own ideas, but they just might not have the platform to be able to share it. So I love that they're in, you know, the comment section, connecting with other people, providing solutions with maybe products and tools that I wouldn't use, or maybe ideas I didn't have. So being able to have like, you know, an empowering place for them to be able to freely share ideas that are kind of, you know, in like free of, or independent of mine, I, I love that aspect. And I definitely see people saying, oh, thanks so much for, you know, recommending that product. It was, it was really, really great and stuff like that. I would agree with that too. I think the coolest thing ever is when I go into the comment section and since I have a global audience, people are commenting from all over the world. And since we're talking about the shared experience of work, people chime in, they're like, well, where I live, this is the law here. We don't really experience this where I live. And it's people from all over the world. So I've learned so much about work cultures across the globe from just reading my comment section, which is fascinating to me. Uh, on my end, <clears throat> it's so funny. I'll go on live or in discord and people will talk to each other and like, I'll start the conversation, prompt something. And then They'll just start going off about their designs and I'm like hands off, they're just going off. And uh, I feel like, especially for the sewing world, like it's a very traditional, um, old fashioned type space and there's a lot of females in that space. So when males find my niche and my channel, they're just like amazed that there's a place for them to share um, their like latest cargo pants and it's not in like sewers, fa like Facebook forums. Like it's a, it's a different audience that they're connecting with and they feel like their, their designs and what they're sharing, the work resonates with each other. You spoke very briefly about, you said in your Discord. Why did you start, I did, like why did you start this place outside of social media that these people can be a part of? It's, it's kind of just like another tool for creators. Um, so like YouTube videos, for example, or TikTok videos, you can only share comments or respond to videos, but like how do people connect with each other besides text? So for me, Discord was a space for them to share, not just text, but um, to share their work with pictures and then create um, like threads. So different topics for them to talk about outside of sewing. So fashion, thrifting, people love thrifting, um, music, other creative elements that are still part of um, the culture of sewing, but gives them the opportunity, like the space, again, creating space for them to connect outside of that. Or what's it like when you meet your, your, I'm not going to call them fans, I'm going to call them community on a trip. Like, what's that interaction like? I don't think, I think many of us is the, we'll see you on the trip. We were talking about this before. You'll feel eyes. All you guys will feel that there are eyes on you wherever you go. But there aren't that many people where it's like amazing connections where you're spending so much time versus the, hey, love your content. Thanks. Photo. Great. Move on. So what's that like? It's, it's interesting because it, it's, I feel like social media, there's this relationship where even the people I follow online, you, you're like, I know them. I know everything about them. Like, we're friends. And then when you meet people in real life, it's like, I want to be your friend. I just I just met you, though. And so it's it's kind of that initial kind of it kicks in of, like, this digital world we live in. And then transitioning it to reality is kind of this, like, weird dance you do. But after that point, it's great. Um, but fun fact about me is I'm actually very introverted. So I like to one-on-one -on -one discussion. I want everything about you. Like, I want to get deep. So it's more just managing that because I, I think the attention that you kind of get being in this space um, and just the personality matchup, I'm like, let's get to know each other like more and more seriously. But by the end of the trip, we're all like best friends and people like connect all over the world and travel together after. And it's really cool to see. This is more of like a, not a hypothetical, but even just thinking beyond this, because all three of you have built such strong communities, continue to build such strong communities. How else do you think beyond social media like you would build. So Dre, you have it in a, net, in a network or a platform. Laura, you're on trips, not specifically to build a community, but that's a byproduct. What else are you guys excited about or potentially want to do that would interact and get to that level of depth so that it moves from just the comment section to like a, to a real connection? Well, I think for me, it's a lot because it's work focused, the networking element that you can have within that space is huge. So I want to transition or I'm working towards a lot more in-person events. Who knows? There might be a conference coming in 2024. But um, to me, it's more getting it off the platform and getting it into real life. I know digital media is also real life, but you know what I mean? Like face to face, um, because I think there's a huge power in shared experience, especially when it comes to work and just learning what other people do and what other opportunities are out there. And maybe you want to pivot your career in a completely different direction. So creating those relationships off platform so that ultimately it kind of helps the community grow and evolve their career, which is really what I want to help people do kind of long term. 
Trey or Lawyer, are there anything that you two are looking forward to in the next year to go deeper or to maybe have further connection with the audience? Uh, for mine, I have, um, so I do these sewing tutorials online, but I have these products which are DIY kits. It comes with all the fabric, the pattern, all the supplies that they need. So I feel like that's um, an example of like taking uh, the customer a bit further beyond just the screen and the content and actually interacting with something physical. So for now, it's sewing kits. I want to expand outside of the craft of sewing so that we can, you know, gather more groups that just feel like there's information gate kept or there's just too much resources and overwhelmed because it's scattered, just like congregating it all and making it easy for people to work with their hands and get excited about that. Lori, we spoke about before how you go on Amazon and you alive on Amazon a bunch and there you have a direct interaction for, I don't know how long you're on there for, but for a good, good amount of time, what is that like because i'm sure there's so many mar all the marketers in the room live streaming has always been a conversation but it's so hard to know how do i get into it how do i not what's that experience like getting a 30 minutes with your with your audience and, and, and interacting i mean it's very interesting because i get an opportunity to you know in the content i create it's it's very short so here I have a full-fledged conversation with someone. I can connect with them. Um, I always say, you know, come and hang out with me on live so that I can answer your questions and, you know, give you more in-depth answers. So I always love connecting because I get to talk and I like to talk sometimes. Um, but just think of Amazon Live like... Um, uh, what's the Rogers um, today's shoppers choice like it's like QVC it's live shopping but just done through uh, the internet I love products I'm a product junkie so if I'm really really excited you get to definitely see how much I love a product and I can just share it in all the many different uses so it's really great because I'm only sharing products that I authentically love and um I want to give like my reviews on it and you know so it's just more in depth and just a great way for me to talk to people one on one but just through the computer. Yeah. You talk about sharing stuff that you love and how it's super important because that's stuff that you know the community the audience is actually going to receive. For all of you here I guess we can roll into more of a, a brand deal discussion. How do you decide what products you're going to take and what products or what companies you're going to partner with, with the fact that there, a, there are people on the other side that are looking to you in some capacity, more than the average person who's just posting on TikTok. Like there is true community with all three of you. So maybe I'll, I'll start with you, Dre. Like what's one or two things you think about in terms of decision criteria that's super important, be it that you're so community focused? There's the common considerations like um, recognizable name, budget, and all that stuff. But I feel like for me, the biggest thing is authenticity. So when I partner with a brand and I produce content, does it feel authentic for myself? And does the brand and the audience think it's going to be authentic? Um, because I'll see right through if it's a, a sell pitch or just like a partnership to push a product. Um, you're not going to get the same engagement. You're not going to get the same performance. So the authenticity of like the content has to make sense. The product has to make sense for me to be showcasing it is definitely the biggest thing. How do you know, so to go further on that, like how do you know if it is the right product for the community? I know you talked about authenticity for you, but then how do you go further to think, is it is it right for the people that are on the other side? Like how do you balance those two elements? Um, well, a lot of times it's like, um, Will my audience, like, is the interest there? So, for example, I did one with Rit Dye, and that's Dye and Clothes. So the garment to garment, it totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's like, yeah, automatic, this makes sense for both me and the audience. Um, I think that you, you kind of just have to put yourself in the, the follower's lens. Like, if you were looking at another influencer, like for myself, that I appreciate, like, would this make sense? And kind of look at it from the audience perspective. It's probably the easiest way. Is it similar for you, Laura, or do you take it a bit of a different way? Um, absolutely. It has to align with me and my brand, but the other two huge components for me are how much creative freedom the brand has given me. So do I get to decide kind of how the content, obviously working with uh, the partner, but do I get to make it so it seamlessly kind of integrates with my content so my audience isn't watching going like, okay, this is like really off brand and very much an ad, or is it something that's like very you know an entertaining vi video that maybe you're not interested in the product but you're still going to watch it anyways because you like the video 
And then I think the third is, do I align and work well with the brand, the people on the other side? So it's really important to me that we have, you know, a good professional working relationship. We enjoy working, you know, with one another. Um, those would be the three, I think, pillars of, of my partnership success. Lori, do you see it in a similar way? Uh, for sure. I yeah. think that um, a lot of the content I make is, let's say, niche, just like you're straight. Um, so it definitely has to be something, a product that I believe in um, and that is a natural fit. Um, messaging is definitely very key. Um, and then also for me, one of the things is one-off brand partnerships, not my favorite, but being able to say I'm partnering with the brand on a long-term basis so that my audience expects it and understands, you know, that they're going to be seeing me work with this brand and, you know, that they kind of, they get it. Like, they get it a lot more because, for example, you know, I went on a, a trip in that video that I, I showed and I learned so much about my favorite products because that's what the brand gave me access to. And I was able to share that information with my audience and they'd never been able to go and, you know, see it. So it wasn't a sponsored video, but you know, there is a brand partnership that is coming from my experience. And I feel like my audience really sees the fit of that content series that I'm doing um, because they got to see all of the things that I got to experience with that brand. So I felt like that um, partnership really, really worked well and was a natural fit. And one of the things that we really did kind of discuss was make sure that I get to say it in the way that I normally show up for my audience. That was really, really key because if you make me say it the way you say it, it's probably not going to go so well. How do you guys deal with that situation? Like, you know, you're, and we're not even going to say audience, we will say community because it is a true community so well. But a brand obviously has their own ideals and what they need to push through how have you guys found ways to deal with that so it's still a successful partnership but it doesn't take away from who you are and it still gets you to a point where you're comfortable you feel excited by it and let's call it the brand gets what they want are there any like tips and tricks that you guys can share I think for me, it comes back to having a good working relationship with the people behind the brand. So for me, I'm never just going to be like, oh, yeah, it sounds good. Let's work together. It's like, let's get to know one another. Do you have, you know, call to actions or direct and messaging that you need integrated? How can we work together so that you're hitting all of your deliverables for your campaign? But I'm also able to be, you know, happy with the end product that's going to integrate with well within my content. So for me, it's nothing signed until we kind of come to a place where we're like, yeah, this is going to work on both ends. We're both going to be happy in this situation. We work well together. Uh, but I kind of ask up front, like, let me know everything that you need to add within this. What does success look like for you? And uh, then working together from that has been helpful on my end. Yeah, this just popped into my mind. Have you ever asked your audience, like, would you want to see me do a deal with like ex friend? And then from that, use that as like signal as to whether you should do it or, or you shouldn't. No, I think that's advertising in itself. But I also, yeah. I wouldn't work for, like, work with a company or push a product that I didn't believe in. So I wouldn't need, for sure. like, I just think that that kind of contradicts the whole authenticity element of it. If you're like, 100%. do you want to see me work with them? And it's like, well, what if they say no? Then yeah. it's maybe yeah. that's not a great fit for you imagine, anyway. So imagine. That'd be wild. Um, all right, we're talking about positive. We're talking positive experiences with brands. Dre, what's been the best experience you've had working with a brand? Um, I think the brands that want to work together a second time. Like that just means like the performance was there and they really appreciated similar, like good working relationship, good performance that just leads to another um, partnership. Um, some of my, my favorite experiences I feel like are when a brand approaches me with an idea and, uh, and I, I read all my comments because that's where all my, my inspiration and data comes from. And having like a screenshot of a comment that's like exactly the idea that the brand wanted sharing that with them just feels really good because it means like that's what the audience wants and we're all aligned, me, the brand, and the audience. Have you guys ever, have the two of you ever used a tactic like that to showcase the value of the community and what the community cares for and how they see it? Do you use comments as a way to communicate your value? I wouldn't say comments, but there's definitely been times where I've met people in person, especially on the trips, where people would be like, oh, you you know, I saw that you posted about this product and I have it with me. And and so it's been more of, of that um, mm -hmm. for me, like actually seeing it translate 
to, to real life of people falling through and purchasing yeah. and then sporting it or like posting it in their own stories and tagging me like, oh, my glasses just arrived. And um, that's more where I look for that kind of stuff. Um, I definitely feel like, you know, there's been, I remember when I came out with something from the Dollar Tree, it was a mop. It was sold out across Canada and the U.S. Um, I definitely see like, you know, clicks when I talk about, let's say, I'm going to say another mop that's really popular. And I bought that mop. My mom bought that mop. I want that mop for Christmas. Um, you know, I went and found that product that you use in the bathroom. Can you share your cleaning list with me? I want all the products that you have. So being able to provide those things, um, just because I guess I'm more like, you know, consumer packaged goods. That's what, you know, my um, community is really about. So being able to share those resources, uh, that's something that I hear all the time, all the time. I use this or what happens when it doesn't work the way it, it worked for you, you know, giving them some, some tips and suggestions. Um, I also love when a brand is in my comments too, like make your presence known. You know, so-and-so has entered the chat. That's also a really great thing. Get involved with the my community, right? So it's not just, hey, I partnered or I collaborated with this brand, but go in and, and talk to the people um, that are, you know, a part of the community and become in the fold with us as well. I think that is also really cool when brands take a chance at doing that on social. So Laura, does that mean that maybe you'll bring some marketers or some brands on your trips with you in the future? <laughs> Definitely not. We'll no, see, but products gonna... definitely make their way there. And I think to, oh, to your point, like if you're really aligned with a company, just because it's not a paid ad, the product's probably going to work its way into your content naturally, whether you're wearing it or it's in the background or whatnot. So keeping an eye out for that so you can jump in the comment section like, oh, I spot this and this. And um, because the organic, I think you get more organic content being posted with your product when you have a good long-term partnership with someone um, versus just, you know, the paid elements to it. I think it's it, everything you guys are saying makes a ton of sense, and it's always it's like so easy for uh, for all of us to say and communicate that to the brand. The brand's always on the opposite, like, "Hey, I need these, like, I need these metrics. Like, don't you guys understand? Is there a better way that you would communicate the value of your community to these marketers or to brands beyond just a follower count and may maybe some engagement rate, so that they really understand from the jump that oh, this is so deep." If I do go with three, four, five, six months, let's go of a partnership, it's really going to hit because of what I've seen. Is there a better way that you think creators can share that community element? Well, I think in the DMs, that's something that no one else, that's something that we are the only ones that are going to be able to see. For me, I definitely say conversations that I have in my DMs are just for me. So being able to share that if there is a particular brand that you are particularly thinking of like partnering with collaborating with being able to share those kind of um you know behind the closed door conversations could be definitely could be impactful is there anything else from you two that you can think of that would that either you've done in the past to showcase community for these brands so that they have so much trust in you from the jump or is it quite similar of you can see what i do we're going to align on a brief, we're going to align on a vision, and we're going to go at it together. Are there other things, or is it usually the typical? I think for me, the, a lot of the partners I work with, they know the value of community, and so that's you know a big reason that we kind of work really well together. Um, and so that kind of came into the conversation, understanding that when you have community, you have trust, you have loyalty, you've, you've built this entire group of people out there that really trust you. And so I think that that's something that you really need to look for when you are partnering with the creator to make sure they have that back of community and not just the numbers and followers. Um, Cause I think it absolutely does translate to how much people trust you is how much they're going to trust the products that you're also sharing. And so um, you can see that even through like click through rates within um, Instagram stories. Um, but I mean, that's after you choose to partner with them. But I think just, you know, kind of going through a creator's comment section, seeing how involved they are. Oftentimes, too, I find with me and my content, people will pick up on every little thing in your video, anything in the background. There'll be comments of like, oh, where's that small vase in the back from? Or like, where are your socks from? Like people will ask these questions. So kind of going through comment sections and seeing what people's communities are interested in um, might help you, you know, see if the partnership aligns with your brand uh, for what their community is really interested in. I would say second to that is when you look at comments, there's like quantity of comments and there's quality of comments. And quality, you can really see like right off the bat. If someone's opening up, they're sharing an experience or a story, 
like that is so much more valuable than just having you know fire emojis or thumbs up emojis like if you can if you as a creator and i know both of these two have have that kind of um, community where people are open and vulnerable you could really see it in the comments and that's like an immediate check mark for community so it sounds like there's a little manual work to this, but being able to identify the right creators purely from who are those intending to build community, it sounds like the comment section has so much gold. Like we've heard ideas come from the comment section, you've heard the communication happens in the comment section, but it's also, I guess it's proof because you guys aren't saying to these followers, hey, please comment these paragraphs about your stories and I'll like reimburse you some free product, but I just want a brand deal. We're, we're coming up on to time. Um, for this conversation at least. I wanna ask you each this, is just like a fun way to end it off and then we'll do a little Q and A. What was like the aha moment? Uh, or what was like a moment, let's call it through TikTok that you realized, oh, this is real or like, damn, this is so exciting or like, wow, I feel, I feel amazing about myself. Anyone of you can start, but like, what was that one aha moment on the platform? Um, I'll start when when I was creating TikToks. I before I decided to be an influencer, I was just making personal TikToks, doing the trends, lip syncing, no dancing though. So in case anyone was wondering, and I had like 200 followers, 400 maybe. Like views are very low. And then once I decided to go into the sewing niche to try to make uh, content around sewing, I made a bucket hat video, and that one my views were like 200, 150. It, it hit like 24,000 in like two days. And then I directed people to my YouTube channel where the actual tutorial lived. And I saw my subscriber count jump tenfold. It was like 600 and then it was like over 6K within two days. So just seeing like the real influence that you have. And, and, and I was so small back then too. Like I wasn't even considered an influencer. But to see the power of influence and you, you see it all the time with other creators, but to actually feel it, it just like fires you up to make you want to, you know, build that community even yeah. further. That's so cool. What about you, Laura? Probably with my first viral video and not in like the cliche way of like it got over a million views, but in the sense that I had like my mom calling me to be like, oh my God, have you seen the numbers on it? And then my brother was like, you know, I just had people send me your video at work. Like what is going on? It's when it started to come back into like my personal circle of people sending videos where I was like, wow, okay, this is neat. That was my first like aha moment of the power of social media and the reach that it can get and how fast it can get there. Um, that would probably be mine. The way would about you? Um, so I had a video go mega viral and it, it took my account from like 150,000 to over a million in three days. <laughs> and when I was sitting at five o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and saw the account go over a million, I was, wow, like crazy. My dad is also here with me today and he used Shout to always back. say... <laughs> Is this, is this like a real thing? Like this TikTok thing, is it real? And he'd always be like that Jerry Maguire line, show me the money. Like, let me see when it's really real. So I think he believes